Café DM. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome to Carpe Diem. On this episode, we're going to talk all about optimal health. Now, I'm a big believer in doing everything that I can to keep my body healthy. I eat right, I do regular exercise, and make sure to get enough rest. After all, aging is a process, and I want to make sure that my quality of life is good in my golden years. Do you ever wonder if there's a magic formula for aging well? Well, let me introduce you to a woman who will inspire you. It's never too late to start something new. Well, here's a couple of medals here, finishers. I think they're both from Honolulu. And I don't know what this one is. BJ McHugh is a marathon runner. She started at 55 and probably started breaking world records, including her last one when she was 90. I have a daughter that's an, an Olympic swimmer and it was twice a day, every day. So I got sort of bored with the whole thing. So then I thought, well, I'll just run along the seawall or walk, I started walking. And then I thought, this is so slow. <laughs> so then I started running and then I, I just got hooked on it. She started running at, at maybe 55 at the beginning of the sort of fitness craze. There was an organized 5K, I think it was, and, and she realized that she could run. And then 5K turned to 10, and then one day somebody suggested a marathon. If you look it up, McHugh, 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 there's year after year after year, the age group category, she holds them all. And, uh, and these, are, these are world categories. This is a record I won in Honolulu. I set a world record for my age group. Oh, look at these little guys. Hi. I used to meet a lot of people on the trail, and some of the women said, you know, we, we're not runners, but you get, we think of you, and we get out in the morning, get up here and do this. Uh, this chap that used to walk and watch me run up and down the creek, and uh, so one day he asked, you know, about running and I inspired him so much he started running and got talked his nephew into doing it and they did Boston Marathon and this was his thank you for and it's engraved by Anthony Joseph B. Salmon. There's a great tip that I've heard for healthy longevity. Motion is lotion so the more we move the healthier we'll be. We know that moving is really one of the most important things that you can do for your health that by being physically active, it can improve, it can improve your health and well-being in so many ways. And by, by moving, what we do is we create opportunities to connect with others as well. Join a group. Go to the rec center. You do, they, they can be slow walkers, whatever. You do something at the level you're at and then build on it. And that, I think being with a group is very important. That's my right group, yeah. So you're going to teach me a couple of tricks. So lunge, feet together and then the other foot. And you're saying stomach in. She's doing it with weights, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I had a neighbor who used to see me. I used to crawl out. We had a hedge there and I'd crawl out so he wouldn't see me because he used to say, there she goes, wasting all her energy. <laughs> And after a while, he learned that I wasn't. I said, no, Ted, I'm not wasting it. I'm building it. <laughs> BJ is an amazing example of what we can do if we desire enough. Many of us will be scared, of course, to aim for a marathon, but a good long walk will do it, as long as it's consistent and gets our heart pumping. When we come back, we talk to Dr. Bell about being mindful. Meditation is a fantastic way to get in touch with self. And so self-control, self-discipline, self-esteem, self-acceptance all comes from within. Carpe Diem, seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. 
We're on the gorgeous patio of Living Space in downtown Vancouver, and we're chatting with Dr. Bell, who of course is the author of The Mind-Body Cure. And we're talking optimal health. Let me ask you to start is, what is the most important thing or something to do to establish optimal health? That's a great question. It, optimal health is broad, but I can tell you the most important factor, if you want good health, is to get in touch with the mind. The mindset determines how your health outcome is going to be. So once you have a solid mindset that is resilient, calm, and grounded, you're going to make great choices for everything else. And what's your trick to get there? The biggest trick, I would say, is to have the awareness and go within. Learn to be your best friend and go quiet. And when you do introspection through meditation, meditation is a fantastic way to get in touch with self. And so self-control, self-discipline, self-esteem, self-acceptance, all comes from within. And so when you establish those principles, then you can write your program for health much more easier than just trying to do it without, without engaging the mind. And often people say, well, you know, your brain can be conditioned to that, but the brain and the mind are very different. And what I wrote in here is the mind is the programmer. The mind is the main guy. I mean, a brain, you can x-ray it, right? The brain just remembers things, it's like a computer. But the mind, where does the mind live? The mind is your consciousness, the awareness. Awareness is the agent of change. So if you want optimal health, you have to be aware of your inner dialogue and what choices you make. And do you think that in the last year of this pandemic that people are being more mindful? Um, I think you're right. People have become more aware of their mental situations. They are choosing things more carefully. So yes, there's a high, heightened level of consciousness. And when they're choosing foods, they're actually looking at food very carefully because the quarantine 15 made them gain weight. And they said, okay, that's a lot of emotional eating. And so they're being more mindful about what they choose to eat. And it takes, what, about two weeks to break a habit? That's right. It's, it's about two to three weeks, say, if you did something 21 days in a row and you embed good habits, they become your automatic default system rather than the negative things. So you went through a big transition, as is in the book, and you're a very healthy specimen today, as is your family. What happens at home for you as a family for optimal health? Like, can you give us some tips? I think the most important tip I would give families is consistency and simple routines. If they can embed those at a very early age with your children, uh, they grow up with it. They think that's their norm. So if it's normal to go and move, to have exercise, to go to bed on time, to eat proper food, it becomes habituated. As I said, we're creatures of habit. Our brain embeds all those conditioning things. So the parents have to be conscious parents to embed these good habits. So consistency, routine, you know, eating foods that is local, uh, natural, low preservative, and easy to digest, and making meal times very mindful events, not watching the TV or having your phones on, just really engaging with, with each other and taking our time to eat rather than eating mindlessly. I think that would be a really good habit for families. Mm -hmm. What about if you grew up in a, for those of us out there that didn't have that growing up but need to really shift into what you're saying, they want to change, they want to pivot, they want to be better? That's a great question. That brings you to neuroplasticity. We are not written in stone. We are fluid beings and our body and our brain can change. So once you make up your mind to change, then you instill new habits for 21 days, do it consistently, and then when it becomes your routine and your consistent habit, it becomes your default. So you can change at any time once you make up your mind to change. Oh, you are good. <laughs> It's never too it's late. It's never too late. <laughs> I like that. When we come back, we visit with celebrity chef Robert Clark to find out how seafood can be prepared in easy recipes that are good for our bodies. And yeah, so just some uh, green bean salad with uh, some roasted red pepper, BC hot house, roasted red pepper, chop chop. Very simple, again, clean, a little bit of sesame seed oil. That's it.
Wikipedia. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. We know that what we eat has a huge impact on our overall health and also that the food choices affect our planet. When we go out for dinner, some of us will recognize the Vancouver Aquarium's Ocean Weiss logo, which certifies that the fish we're eating is not an endangered species. But did you know that Chef Robert Clark was one of the co-founders of that program? He spent his entire career promoting sustainable seafood and in 2020 was awarded the Order of Canada for that work. I met him at the barbecue. Welcome to Steveston. We're on the dock. As you can see, we've got a barbecue and we've got Chef Robert Clark. And it doesn't surprise me in the least that we have seafood out here. Not just seafood, but local, sustainable, ocean-wise, BC seafood. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little halibut dish. Mm. I'm just playing a little bit of leeks on the bottom just to give it a base and keep the fish up off of off the off the paper. But uh, a little bit of salt. Halibut. Some people are intimidated uh, uh, cooking it because it, it often dries out. Like if you overcook it, so it's very uh, it's a very delicate fish. We got you see how how, it, how shiny, how firm it is. Mm. I got too old to be a chef on my feet 16 hours yeah. a day, then, you know, I, I had my fish shop, which really uh, helped uh, consumer awareness to, that they can be responsible and, and, and to demonstrate that, I, that a, a thriving, successful Vancouver business can be responsible and be ocean wise. So now uh, that just goes in there? And yeah, so we're just going to throw that and we're going to basically steam it in the butter and white wine and, and its own juices. Tarragon and orange, I like those, mm. those flavors together. Yeah. And I can't, my, I have to use onions of some caliber. Shallots, garlic, or onions. <laughs> <laughs> and a little splash of uh, BC a little bit wine, of, a I little like bit it. Of BC wine. I like that. Uh, save me from drinking it all. <laughs> and we're just going to steam that. We're just going to cook that in the barbecue for, we'll see, maybe. It depends on how hot the barbecue is. It's very experimental today. Maybe six, eight minutes, ten minutes. Oh, yeah, my oh, gosh. Like, look at feel that, eh? Like oh, it's, and the scent. Like, is that oh. not wonderful? We should probably just forget veg. We should probably just eat this now. We're going to let it rest. We're going to let, we'll it, let rest. it rest. So that's slightly undercooked. Yeah. And as it sits there, it's just going to it's gonna slowly cool down a bit, but it's going to finish this cooking, so it sh should be moist. And absorb all that jus. And oh. the flavors and stuff. Yum. Okay, so let's get some uh, ling cod on here. Ling isn't a cod and it's not a ling fish. Ling, if you're from the Atlantic, both those words, you'd be confused if you saw this fish because it's neither. Uh, but it is one of our most versatile species here in BC. It's, o it's ocean wise, it's considered to be uh, sustainably managed. Uh, so I, I, I tend to use it a lot. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna oil this up to get it on the grill. Is that gonna, sesame oil? It's a little bit sesame. Oh. This, this dish is gonna be Yum. a little, uh, a little influence there. There we go, pretty straightforward. So I've turned the heat down a little bit, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish it through the skin. The skin is so important. It, it just, it adds flavor to the product, but it also protects the product from overcooking, especially on a barbecue. Like that skin is gonna protect oh. the ling cod uh, it and maintain its, maintain its moisture. And yeah, so just some uh, green bean salad with uh, some roasted red pepper, BC Hothouse roasted red pepper chop chop. Good. Very simple, again, clean, a little bit of sesame seed oil. That's it. My overall goal is to encourage British Columbians to enjoy British Columbian seafood and to embrace your producers because they are the cornerstone of our future as far as food sovereignty is concerned. We have to support the people that produce our food, whether it's a carrot or whether it's a link card. And that's why I wanted to come and see you because I really believe in what you're doing and I want to support you and I just want to come and eat. Yeah. <laughs> so you keep let's, talking. Let's be real. <laughs> you talk, I'll eat. Mm. Mm. 
I oh. love them. Sorry I didn't bring more than two forks. I love, no. <laughs> we can all do our part to protect our oceans and our food supply. Buy mindfully. It's good to know where your food comes from. And full disclosure, I now order all my seafood online from Organic Ocean. Find a local trusted purveyor and support them. We'll be right back and we'll talk to Bill Van Gorder from CARP about Zoomer Wellness. One thing that older Canadians can do for themselves, and that's look after their own fitness. And if they stay fit, they will stay healthy. Welcome back. We've got Bill Van Gorder with us from CARP, and we're going to be talking Zoomer Wellness. Bill, you're a big advocate for physical fitness, and I still have the Nordic poles that you gave us at the CARP AGM a few years ago. So welcome to Carpe Diem. Thank you, Carmen. It's good to be here. And uh, yes, it's great to help about uh, talk about older Canadians' fitness. And now, CARP, has a campaign that I just love. So I want to give you the honor of saying the title. Can you just tell us what it's called? It's called Stand Up Straight and Move Your Buns. And that's certainly what we're encouraging our CARP members and other older adults uh, to do. Yeah, and you know, I mean, we know that there's been a lot of studies on this and that, you know, and many, many scientists will tell you that that is the magic pill for longevity is fitness. If our doctors told us we could just take one pill and that would solve many of our problems and our health issues and prevent others, would we take that pill? Well, we would, and it is available, and it's called active participation in a regular fitness program. And so tell us a little bit about the campaign. You know, CARP has always been in the advocacy business, asking governments uh, and other organizations to do things to help seniors. But we realize there's, there's one thing that older Canadians can do for themselves, and that's look after their own fitness. And if they stay fit, they will stay healthy. And if they stay healthy, they'll avoid many of the diseases and other issues that we run into as we get older. So we decided that one of the major focuses we would have for this year would be to urge our members to get out, get fit, and as you said, stand up straight, move your buns, and preserve your mind and your body. How are you encouraging us all to participate in this? Well, we're reminding our CART members and their friends that uh, there are many ways to be involved in a fitness program, uh, but the easiest way, and the one that 70% of Canadians say is their favorite form of fitness, is just to get out and walk. That walking is a form of fitness that everybody, almost everybody uh, can do. Some people will need aids to do it. Others can do it on their own. Uh, but if you get, uh, you know, two and a half hours, hours, 150 minutes uh, uh, a week of uh, a fitness activity, you're going to add years to your life. And that's not just a, a promise or an idea. There's actual research that shows that's what happens. It not only improves our body, but our, improves our, our mind. And especially if you do it near the water or in a park where there's green. I mean, there's so many other benefits that come with it. Well, there are. And people don't always understand the, uh, uh, the, the reason for this. You know, most of the, of the good stuff that happens in our body happens in the large muscles. That's where we produce the oxygen that fuels the body. That's what builds the strength so that we uh, don't risk falling, which is a, a concern of, of many uh, Old, older older adults. It's where we build our bone structure and prevents osteoporosis, for, which for many of us, especially women, osteoporosis is a real concern. All of those things can be helped immeasurably uh, by regular activity, the regular activity of walking. And also being physically fit 
helps your mental health. Absolutely. We know that it not only uh, can delay the onset of uh, uh, dementia, but just makes you uh, feel better because those muscles, once again, they produce what we call endorphins. And the endorphins are what make us feel happier and, and uh, more alive. And, you know, sometimes you hear, hear runners who run, and I'm not suggesting we all become runners, but they talk about the runner's high. Well, you get a high like that when you're out for a walk, just breathing the fresh air, looking at the uh, the ocean or the beautiful country around you, or just enjoying your own neighborhood and looking to see whether the neighbors have cut their lawn or not. It's all part of a fitness program. This is a great campaign that I think hopefully everyone will participate in because not moving is not an option. If you want to stay healthy and after all, quality of life is what we all desire. And that means we must do our part, our very best, to assure we have a long and healthy life. And of course, if you want more detailed information on member benefits and advocacy, go to carp.ca. And that's the show. If you want to see a conversation happen here, get in touch. And remember, as our CARP president, Moses Neimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So CARP DM and seize your day. 